In this video, I'll be writing four Racket functions and showing how to use testing and debugging inside of Racket. So we're going to write and test four functions. To do the testing, we're going to use a, a library from Racket called HTDP testing. So down here I have some test cases. This is just sample calls to my function that I'm going to be writing. I'm going to comment them, I'm going to uncomment them before they were commented out so they wouldn't run. And I'm writing this function add42. What add42 does is it takes in an integer n and adds 42 to them. So I'm going to write two test cases. I call add42 with the argument 0, it should return 42. And I call add42 with the argument 1 and it should return 43. To fill in the body, I'm going to say plus 42 and n. And then I can run this code and my two test cases will both pass because they return the right answer. And once I run it, I can test it down here, add 42 to 42, and I get 84. My next function is is42. It checks if the number n is the number 42. Again, I wrote some test cases first. I'm going to uncomment these. If I run these test cases right now, they both return errors. So it says two of the four checks failed. I'm going to modify this code and then those checks should pass. So I can check equals is the variable n that I passed in equal to 42. Now when I run this, all four of my tests pass. My next function that I'm going to work with is sign. So here are my test cases uncomment them. If, so here are my test cases. If the argument n is positive, it should return 1. If n is negative, it should return negative 1. And if n is 0, it should return 0. So I have both in my comment the specification of this and in my test cases I have that same information. So inside of my function I have a few different tests I need to make, so I'm going to use a cond. I can set up the, the different cases that I'll use. I'll have th two tests and then my last one will have an else. So my first test, I'll test if n is equal to 0. If n is equal to 0, then I can return 0. If n is less than 0, then I want to return negative 1. And otherwise, then I can assume here that n must be greater than 0. And here I want to return 1. I'm going to close my last parenthesis. This parenthesis closes the cond. And now I can run my test cases. And now all seven of my test cases pass. So being able to write the test cases first can help me think about the individual cases that I need to handle in my function. My last one is factorial. This is just a typical factorial function. And I look at my test cases. My first one is if fact is of 1, it should return 1. And fact of 0 should return 1. So from this, I can start off and say, well, if, if n is less than, maybe less than or equal to 1, then I should return 1. That handles my first two test cases. Else, what I'll do, I'll delete that. I'll say, well, what I'm going to do is I return n times fact of n minus 1. Close the if and the define. And this represents the case of n factorial is just n times n minus 1 factorial. So I'm representing that in my recursive case. I can run that and now all 10 of my test cases pass. I also have a something here called trace trace we saw at the beginning we can import this library racket trace so I'm using that um, and what happens is when I put that after my function whenever I call fac fac of 3 what it'll do is it'll show me each of the recursive calls that get made scroll up so here it showed me each of the recursive calls that get made. I can do another one, fac of 4, shows me it. When I called fac of 4, it made the call fac 4, fac 3, fac 2, fac 1, which returned 1. 
to fac 2, fac 2 returned 2 to fac 3, fac 3 returned 6 to fac 4, and then eventually fac 4 returned 24. This looks different if I, if I had commented out this trace and run it again. Now when I call fac of 4, I'm just going to see the result. I don't get to see the internals of it. So trace provides some additional functionality so you can see exactly what recursive calls get made. So as a review of what you just saw, we can import the library, HTDP testing. Here's the format of a typical test case. You use the keyword check expect, and then you put the function call that you want it to be evaluated and your expected output. And here's a sample test case. And then we generate report, and you're just going to include that once at the end of your file, and that will run all of your test cases or all of your check expects in that file. And what that should do is output something like all five tests pass. For debugging, we use this, in this library racket slash trace. We called an example trace on the fac function, so we, we called trace with a procedure name. And what it did is anytime we called that function, it showed us exactly what the inputs to each of the functions that was called.